this story covers the description, new features, and adjustments of the new Carter carburetor used on Buick Series 40 engines. First, let's consider description. The new Carter WGD carburetor is a two-barrel, downdraft, single float type. The float bowl and throttle body are newly designed to make the carburetor a shorter, more compact unit. The Carter WGD carburetor is interchangeable with the Stromberg WW carburetor. The automatic choke and accelerating pump have linkages, which are on the outside of the carburetor body. They are both simple and easy to get at for adjustment. To describe the rest of the carburetor, we will cover the basic carburetor circuits, one at a time. Now, let's look at a drawing of the float circuit. Fuel is fed to both carburetor barrels from a single float bowl. The float and inlet needle valve are both mounted on the underside of the float bowl cover section of the air horn. Notice that the inlet has a standpipe and strainer for protection against dirt or water in the fuel. Next is the choke circuit. Here, the tension of the thermostatic spring is balanced against the pull of the choke piston teamed with the pressure of intake air on the choke valve. This balance controls starting and warm-up mixtures. The choke circuit linkage controls the fast idle cam position to prevent stalling during warm-up. The choke unloader tang on the throttle lever holds the choke valve open to overcome flooding. The pump circuit provides extra fuel for acceleration. Fuel is forced through the discharge nozzles into the carburetor barrels by a single pump plunger located in the float bowl. In the low speed circuit, adequate fuel flow to the low speed metering jets is assured by the flats on the metering rods. The idling fuel air mixture is controlled by adjustable idle needle valves. The high speed circuit main discharge nozzles take over as soon as the engine speeds up. Fuel flow to the nozzles is gradually increased by the action of the metering rods as the throttle valves are opened. The power system goes into operation when the engine is under load. When vacuum drops in the manifold passage, the vacuum piston spring moves the metering rods to their power position, permitting increased fuel flow to the main discharge nozzles. So much for description. Next, let's cover the new features of the Carter carburetor. The first shown is the new position of the choke piston. The choke piston now works in a vertical position compared to the horizontal arrangement of the previous model. However, the choke housing remains on the same side of the carburetor as before. The new throttle body is made shorter to reduce overall carburetor height. It is heated to help prevent engine stalling due to carburetor icing. Exhaust gas is conducted through a heat passage, which is formed in the underside of the throttle body casting and the top of the manifold. The exhaust gas comes through drilled holes from the exhaust gas crossover passage in the intake manifold. Notice that the mounting flange gasket for the Carter carburetor has two exhaust gas holes, while the Stromberg mounting flange gasket has none. The accelerating pump rod is now on the choke housing side of the carburetor. However, the choke rod and the fast idle cam are in the same location as on the previous model. Another new feature of the Carter carburetor is the start aid torsion spring on the throttle lever. This improvement of an exclusive Buick feature 
is designed to prevent unintentional choke unloading during initial cold starts. Now we can talk about adjustments. While operation of the new Carter carburetor is basically the same as previous models, it must be properly adjusted to get the most efficient and economical operation. The Carter carburetor can be adjusted on the bench or on the engine. Specifications for correct adjustment of the Carter two-barrel carburetor are listed on the quick reference specifications page in the Carter section of your two-barrel carburetor booklet. Correct float level adjustment is important to maintaining the correct level of fuel in the float bowl. High float level can cause flooding, stalling, and high fuel consumption. Low float level can cause flat spots or surging and may result in an excessively lean mixture. To check the float level, first invert the air horn assembly and check the float to make sure that it is parallel with the outer edge of the air horn casting. Align if necessary. To check the float level setting, place gauge J818-6 between the air horn and the float at the center of the float. Be sure that the air horn gasket is removed for this check. If resetting is necessary, adjust by bending the float arm until the float just touches the gauge. Reinstall the air horn assembly and metering rods. Correct accelerating pump adjustment assures delivery of the proper amount of extra fuel when needed for rapid acceleration. A short pump stroke can cause sluggish acceleration or flat spots. A long pump stroke can cause loading up on acceleration. To check or adjust the accelerating pump plunger stroke, first check the plunger link position. Make sure that the plunger link is in the outer or long stroke hole of the operating arm before proceeding. Turn the fast idle cam to let the fast idle speed adjusting screw rest in the notched out section. Back out the throttle stop screw to allow the throttle valves to close completely. Place a straight edge across the top of the dust cover boss for a reference line. The flat top of the pump arm should be parallel with the straight edge. If necessary, adjust by bending the pump rod at the offset as shown using tool J4552. Proper metering rod adjustment is important to good engine performance and operating economy. Because it is affected by adjustment of the accelerating pump stroke, the metering rod setting must be checked after the pump stroke is adjusted. To check the metering rod setting, first make sure that the throttle valves are closed completely. Then. Loosen the metering rod arm clamp screw to let the arm move freely. Press the vacuum piston link down to bottom the metering rods in the carburetor body. While the piston link is held down, move the metering rod arm into contact with the lip of the link and carefully tighten the clamp screw. Reinstall the metering rod chamber dust cover. Automatic choke adjustment is made by lining up the index marks on the choke coil and air horn housings. If the choke cover has been removed, replace it with the index mark downward and rotate the cover counterclockwise to hook up the thermostatic spring. Fast idle cam adjustment should be made if the cam stays on too long or if it drops off to the slow idle step too soon. To adjust the fast idle cam position, first hold the throttle lever open far enough to lift the fast idle speed adjusting screw clear of the cam. Then, with the choke valve held tightly closed, 
check the clearance between the lug on the outer lever on the choke shaft and the stop on the inner lever using gauge J1388 or a 20 thousandths feeler gauge. If the clearance is not correct, use tool J4552 or needle nose pliers to bend the lug on the outer lever as required to get the correct adjustment. A correct choke unloader adjustment overcomes the problem of carburetor flooding when starting a partly warmed up engine. To check the unloader, move the throttle lever to its wide open position. This will force the choke valve partly open. Check the clearance between the upper edge of the choke valve and the wall of the air horn using the recommended drill for a gauge. Bend the unloader tang on the throttle lever to adjust if clearance is not correct. Following the choke unloader adjustment, the fast idle speed adjustment can be made. To adjust fast idle speed, rotate the fast idle cam to put the adjusting screw on the highest step of the cam. With the engine running at normal operating temperature and with the transmission in neutral, turn the adjusting screw to obtain an engine speed of 1300 revolutions per minute. To adjust fast idle speed when the carburetor is off the engine, set the fast idle adjusting screw on the highest step of the cam as previously mentioned. Turn the adjusting screw until the recommended wire feeler gauge can be inserted between the lower edge of the throttle valve and the wall of the throttle bore. Initial idle mixture and speed adjustments should be made before starting the engine to prevent stalling. To adjust the initial idle mixture, first seat both idle needles lightly. Then back out each needle one full turn. For initial idle speed adjustment, hold the fast idle cam in the slow idle notch and back off the throttle stop screw to completely close the throttle valves. Turn the stop screw in until it contacts the throttle arm and then give it an additional half turn. After the carburetor is installed on the engine, hook up a vacuum gauge and tachometer. With the engine running at normal operating temperature and the transmission in neutral, adjust the throttle stop screw to set the idle speed at 450 revolutions per minute. Adjust the mixture needles to get the highest steady reading on the vacuum gauge. And don't forget, make the final carburetor adjustment by road testing. It's the only sure way to check carburetor operations.